He spoke so softly at times that some participants struggled to hear him. According to five people familiar with the meeting, no one even knows what the hell he's saying. He read from notes to make obvious points like, we stand for democracy. Now announcing President Biden will not meet with the media, dash, dash, almost immediately after landing south of Paris this morning. The goal is to deliver decisions on asylum as quickly as possible. The quicker decision means that a migrant is less likely to pay a criminal smuggler thousands of dollars to take him on a dangerous journey. Biden is losing his mind. Newspaper controversy. Everybody is now asking the question. So it means something when everyone starts talking about it. So here's the story. When Biden met with congressional leaders in the West Wing in January to negotiate Ukraine, he spoke so softly at times that some participants struggled to hear him. <laughs> Ukraine according to five people familiar with the meeting. No one even knows what the hell he's saying. He read from notes to make obvious points like we stand for democracy, paused for extended periods like Mitch McConnell, and sometimes closed his eyes for so long that some in the room began to wonder whether he was tuning out or asleep. Now in February, one-on-one -on -one chat in the Oval Office with Mike Johnson, the Speaker of the House, the President said, a recent policy change by his administration that jeopardizes some big energy projects was just a study. Oh no, we were just studying that. And they're like, no, you did that. That's according to six people told at the time about what Johnson said had happened. Johnson worried about the president's memory had slipped about the details of his own policy. He's like, no, I thought we were studying that. He's like, no, you did that. Last year when Biden was negotiating with House Republicans to lift the debt ceiling, his demeanor and command of the details seemed to shift from one day to the next according to Kev McCarth. On some days, he had loose and spontaneous exchanges with Republicans, and on others, he mumbled. McCarthy said, I used to meet with him when he was the vice president. I'd go to his house. He's not the same person. The 81-year-old Biden is the oldest person to hold the presidency. His age and cognitive fitness have become major issues. White House and top aides say, no, no, he's sharp, he's vigorous. Some who've worked with him, however, including Democrats, and some who have known him back to his time as VP, describe him now appearing slower. He's got some good moments and bad. For much of his career, Biden enjoyed a reputation on Capitol Hill, known for his detailed knowledge, whatever. All right, the dude, you've seen him speak at prior campaign events. It's weird to think about how politicians used to actually handle this stuff. I remember those clips of Joe Biden going in and kind of like scolding people, getting in their faces, yelling at them almost, doing one of these. All the citizens are like, wow, I guess he's really smart because he's talking loud. And now we have the internet. Now we realize these people are just liars and actors. But all right, so for much of his career, he enjoyed a reputation of being a master negotiator, whatever, and it continues. Now, people are getting a little bit nervous. This article is based on interviews. Now we're getting into it. More than 45 people over several months. The interviews were with Republicans and Democrats and many other people. The White House kept close tabs on some of the Wall Street Journal's interviews with Democrat lawmakers. They just, you know, they said that I should give you a call back, says Gregory Meeks. Bates, the White House spokesman, said, we thought it was important that all perspectives be represented in your article so that it's not false and politically motivated. Now, Trump, who's 77, is three and a half years younger, but actually looks and sounds competent. During Biden's January meeting on Ukraine, he laid out a forceful case for providing aid. Now, aides familiar with the debt ceiling negotiations say that they wanted to be above the fray, but some who attended the meetings attributed off-key moments to his speech impediment and his tendency to be long-winded. And those who expressed concern about Biden say they saw an unevenness, not the caricature of an adult leader. The White House said the president's doctors have found him totally fit and blah, blah, blah. But voters are noticing on May 20th during a Rose Garden event celebrating Jewish American heritage. One day earlier, he indicated that he was vice president during COVID, which started three years after he left that office, right? So he doesn't even know. It was one of the numerous flubs. He doesn't know where he is. In January, he mixed up two of his Hispanic cabinet secretaries, Alejandro and Xavier. He's like, yeah, whatever. They are all the same. During a February fundraiser in New York, he recounted speaking to German Chancellor Helmut Kohl, who died in 2017. Same month, he also said that he spoke to French President Francois Mitterrand, who died in 1996. Trump, for his part, mixed up Nikki Haley, yeah, all right, with, what, Nancy Pelosi during a January speech. But Trump and spokesmen say he's sharp as a tack. Now, questions about Biden's fitness have obviously been amplified due to the Robert Hur report, but you see this article just keeps going, right? We're just, just scratching the surface on this thing. So they're talking about 
about Ukraine. Here's a meeting between Biden and Johnson not long ago, February this year. It says just after a late February meeting between House and Senate leaders about military funding, Biden pulled aside Johnson for a chat. Johnson brought up a new energy administration policy that halts future permits for shipping LNG to other countries. Policy fan concern. They said, what are you talking about? They're just going to go to Russia, get their energy from them. So Johnson said, hey, Mr. President, you're helping Vladimir Putin. poo You know that, don't you? Biden said, no, uh, that's not true. That's not the new policy. That new policy was only a study, according to several people. Johnson said, what? You nuts? Biden appeared to have forgotten the details of his own policies. Oh, no. Bates, the White House spokesman, said that those who heard those versions, that's just a false account from Mike Johnson. That's not true at all. And they say no new energy permits for exporting have been issued since the pause was announced. So it turns out Johnson was right. In mid-April, there were some other problems. May, not long ago, 2023 last year, says in 2011 when Biden was VP, he also played a central role in increasing our spending. He was trying to stay above the fray, they said. But on May 21st, 11 days away from a possible default, Biden called Kev McCarth from Air Force One on his way back from a summit. On that phone call, he was more with it than any other time, said McCarthy. He was going back to the old stuff that he'd done for a long time. He said that during a negotiation, it is not unusual for the White House to reassert its original position. And so they're now saying that he's not doing well. Now, I think a lot of this we've already known. He mixes up names. He doesn't know what is happening with his policies. He doesn't really know where he is most of the time. In fact, there was a new Time interview that, that was just conducted. I read through a good portion of it. It was transcribed and I read through some of it. The transcription doesn't sound at all like Joe Biden talks. So they clearly changed it and modified it and cleaned it up to make it palatable for the American people to read. I mean, he appears very much as he appears on TV. He is older than when he started in yeah. office. It's visible if you just look side by side on the tape. The transcript is a good place for people to go to assess that. You know, we describe it in the piece as well. There's some sort of color description of how he appeared in there. So I read it. It's not that interesting. There's one section in there where he confuses President Xi of China and Vladimir Putin of Russia. I don't know. He gets them completely off, misses stuff like that. So people wonder if he is even there. And then we ask ourselves, what is he doing? He's traveling around the world. He just landed in Paris. He called a lid on the day. So people are watching him take the short stairs constantly. But here comes Joe. We're all watching. Okay, look at the steps, Mr. President, for the love of, please, please. Okay, so he's going to make it down the steps. We're always a little nervous for that one. But he lands. He's in Paris, and he's commemorating the 80th anniversary of D-Day. And so, of course, that's a important memorial. And he's doing some photos there, and that's our president. Now, they called the lid on it, so Fox News was reporting. He lands. It's a big trip. You know, you get a little jet lag when you're flying on Air Force One and you can take naps and you have the entire country's arsenal at your disposal. But he lands and I guess he's done. So they're not doing much over there in Paris. House announcing President Biden will not meet with the media, dash, dash, almost immediately after landing south of Paris this morning. The president is in France to commemorate the 80th anniversary of D-Day. All right, so he's pretty much done over there. Call the lid for the rest of the day, hanging out in Paris. Now, people are wondering why the world is in such disorder if Joe Biden is such a competent, intelligent, capable, functional human that doesn't have dementia. How come things are so problematic? This is John Kirby, who got asked about this from ABC. Hey, John, you want to explain here? It seems like Biden's brain failing might be responsible for some of the disorder, the disarray, the incompetence that we're observing throughout the entire administration and the world. Any comment? Former President Trump said this morning on Fox News that the world is out of control and laid the blame on President Biden because he said world leaders don't respect President Biden. Your response? Well, I don't get into election campaign rhetoric. I can't do that. I can just tell you that everywhere the president goes, and he will hear this message, I have no doubt, when we go to France next week for, for the D-Day commemoration and a state visit with President Macron, as well as the G7 in Italy the week later. He'll continue to hear from American leaders, as he has heard, that they welcome American leadership on the world stage, that they appreciate the way the president has revitalized our alliances and partnerships and our networks around the world, and how we have stood up to aggression. All right, so that's, I think, the question. How and what are they doing there? What are they trying to negotiate with the French and the rest of NATO as the Ukraine war escalates. Now, we also have new policy changes from our demented president. Here's what he sounded like. Let's see if his brain is functional as he now tries to gain control of our border, announcing that he needs to take some action on the border because it's such a catastrophic policy position for them. They're losing massively in the polls. Here's what Joe said about their new change. Now they're going to fix everything as the election is around the corner. Today, I'm announcing actions to bar migrants who cross our southern border unlawfully from receiving asylum. Migrants 
immigrants will be restricted from receiving asylum at our southern border unless they seek it after entering through an established lawful process. And those who seek to come to the United States legally, for example, by making an appointment and coming to a port of entry, asylum will still be available to them, still available. But if an individual chooses not to use our legal pathways, if they choose to come without permission and against the law, they'll be restricted from receiving asylum and staying in the United States. This action will help us to gain control of our border, restore order to the process. This ban will remain in place until the number of people trying to enter illegally is reduced to a level that our system can effectively manage. Which is what? To carry out this order consistent with all our responsibilities under international law every one of them. In addition to this action, we recently made important reforms in our asylum system, more efficient and more secure reforms. The goal is to deliver decisions on asylum as quickly as possible. The quicker decision means that a migrant is less likely to pay a criminal smuggler thousands of dollars to take him on a dangerous journey, knowing that... What? So if we accept them in faster, they won't come in illegally? I guess? Gosh. All right, so that's our demented president trying to explain. That is a perfect freeze frame. Well done. I'm proud of that one. But here is what Alejandro says, he says, you know, it's not really to stop illegal immigration. It's just kind of to put them onto the right path. We don't want them coming in illegally. We just want to rubber stamp them and admit them that way. The goal here is to reduce the number of people who come to the southern border of the United States and cross illegally. Our goal is to drive people who seek and need humanitarian relief into the lawful, safe, and orderly pathways that we have built. And so individuals who arrive at our border and cross illegally will be barred from asylum with exceptions. Okay, what kind of exceptions? For everything? Probably. So that is what the Biden administration is doing. The Republicans are out blasting this, and Trump, of course, has responded. Here is what Ted Cruz said about it. He says, all of this is electioneering. It is too little too late. They've already opened the floodgates. We've been invaded for years now, and so enough already. Don't buy it. Do you think it's time for Speaker Johnson to try to negotiate some type of deal with the White House? No, the White House won't agree to anything. So understand, Marsha just made a very important point on H.R. 2. The House passed strong legislation that would have secured the border, H.R. 2. It was designed to secure the border. In the Senate, I introduced H.R. 2 in the Senate. Twice, I forced a vote on the Senate floor in H.R. 2. Twice, every single Democrat voted no. Now, the press very meekly reported what Chuck Schumer said, which is H.R. 2 is dead in the Senate. Why? Because it's designed to work. H.R. 2 is designed to lower the numbers back to where they were when Biden came into office. It's designed to secure the border. So Schumer was right. H.R. 2 was dead in the Senate. Why? Because the Democrats want this border invasion. That is the outcome they want. So you can't negotiate. Now, I will say this. I'm going to make a prediction. In the next five months, we're going to see a very modest decrease in illegal immigration. Why? Because Joe Biden controls it. He caused this. The Democrats want this invasion. And there's an so election. In the next five months, you're going to see the numbers go down slightly. So then they can say, see, we solved the problem. It's a lie. They know it's a lie. And if, God forbid, they win in November, the numbers will skyrocket again and more people will die. Go ahead, last question. A lot of you have talked about this being the number one issue for voters. You're running for re-election. There's a lot of polling, maybe not in Texas, but in other states, where Democratic incumbents are polling better than Joe Biden. Questions about polls and immigration being a number one issue for America, some demographics, some jurisdictions. It's not that big of a deal. Democrats are doing well. Are trying to elect a Republican Senate. I'm wondering if you have any thoughts on how on the messaging from Republicans to get across. In what else can Republicans say in those districts? Well, I can tell you in Texas, the invasion at our southern border is the number one issue in the state of Texas. That's right. And I believe it is compelling across the country. Now, you're right. Democrat senators, when they go home, there are a lot of senators that go home that pretend they're not crazy, that pretend they're actually moderate, middle of the road. It's an absolute lie. On this issue, it's true. every single Democrat, all of them, Lunatics. have voted for this over and over and over again. H.R. 2, they had the opportunity. Do you want to secure the border? Every Democrat voted no. John Tester, he goes back to Montana, says, it's terrible what's happening at the border. And then he votes against securing the border. Yeah, why, John? Bob Casey goes back to Pennsylvania, says, oh, we got to do something about illegal immigration. And then he votes against securing the border. Yeah, how come, John? Every Every single Democrat, every one of them. I forced to vote a couple of years ago on Kate's Law. Right, you want to talk about common sense legislation? Kate's Law polls at about 90%. Why is that? Because it's named after Kate Steinle, beautiful young woman in California, murdered on a California pier by an illegal immigrant who had been released over and over and over again through the revolving door of Democrats letting violent criminals go. Kate's Law says that anyone who enters the country repeatedly illegally with an aggravated felony will face a mandatory 
mandatory minimum prison sentence. In any room in America, in the bluest state in America, if you ask people, they say, yeah, Kate's law makes perfect sense. I forced a vote on the Senate floor. Every single Democrat voted no on Kate's law. Because they love it. So the challenge is, frankly, our friends in the media who are They here, want this entire environment. Repeat the adjective when you discuss John Tester, you call him the moderate Democrat. He's not a moderate Democrat. Every single time he's voted in favor of this invasion. And there is a disconnect because every Democrat goes home and pretends they don't want this problem to happen, but they all want it. And the reason is they look at that invasion and they see future Democrat voters. This is all about power. This is the most cynical decision I've ever seen. Listen, every one of us here has been down to the border multiple times. I'll tell you, when you look in the eyes of a little girl or a little boy who's been brutalized, who's been abused by human traffickers, when you see women who've been... They don't care. They don't care. They're all just a means to an end. They're like cattle. They're just herding cattle in. All of us are like cattle. It's not just the immigrants. It's all of us. We're all just tax cattle being shifted around for some purpose, and they use people for their ends. And then they turn around and they tell us that it's all for our own good. That's why they mandate us to go do this and go do that, because they just want to pump us for our voter registrations, if you're someone else that serves them, or they want to pump you for your taxes, or they want to get you on a subscription service for a pharmaceutical, whatever. So here is Donald Trump responding, saying, this is nothing that will stop the invasion. It's time to reelect me. President in the history of our country, by far, has totally surrendered our southern border. His weakness and extremism have resulted in a border invasion like we have never seen before. Other countries have emptied out their prisons, insane asylums, and mental institutions, and sent us drug dealers, human traffickers, and terrorists. Millions of people have poured into our country, and now, after nearly four years of his failed, weak leadership, pathetic leadership, true, crooked Joe Biden is pretending to finally do something about the border. But in fact, it's all about show because he knows we have a debate coming up in three weeks. The truth is that Joe Biden's executive order won't stop the invasion. It's weak and it's pathetic. It will actually make the invasion worse. Millions of people a year will continue to pour across our border and be released into our country. And we recently learned Biden is secretly granting mass amnesty to hundreds of thousands of these illegal aliens, along with welfare, government benefits, work permits, and jobs. He's not doing that, however, for our veterans. He's not doing that for our homeless. He's giving- He's doing that for his own campaign, and that is the president responding to him. So Joe Biden's mental faculties clearly gone. It is not going to get better. It's going to get worse. And our question is whether they're going to keep him. Are they going to throw this dude up on a debate stage against Trump and see if he can hold his own? Is that just another political sandbag that they're setting up for him to trip over as the election moves forward? We'll see. We'll continue to cover. Thanks for subscribing, my friends. We'll see you back here.